In this video, we're going to talk about destructors in C++. We'll see what they are and how you declare them with an example, and we'll also look at when they're called. In a follow-up video, we'll see an example of a class that requires a destructor in order for it to clean up after itself. So what is a destructor? So destructors are class member functions that get invoked when the object goes out of scope or when the object is destroyed by a call to the delete function. The name of the destructor is the class name preceded by a tilde, and it takes no parameters. So for example, this would be how you would declare a destructor for a class called class name. Now, why do we need destructors? Well, C++ is not a garbage collected language. If you allocate memory, there are several cases where that memory won't actually be released. And so if you don't release it explicitly, it will no longer be available to your program and you'll have a memory leak. So in C++, it's up to the class and therefore the programmer who is writing the class to clean up after itself. So the destructor should free any resources that get allocated by the class, including things like memory, files, or any network connections that are created by the class. Now, one common misconception is that the destructor should free anything allocated in the constructor. However, that's not completely accurate because the class may allocate memory in other methods. So a more accurate way to say that would be the destructor should free any resources allocated by any method in the class. So if you have a class method that may allocate memory for some reason, then the destructor should free that memory as well, even though it wasn't allocated directly by the constructor. So anytime your class allocates resources anywhere, you need to make sure that if that method doesn't free those resources, that they're freed in the destructor. So let's see an example. Here you can see I have a class that has a single data member, an integer a, and then it has a constructor. Now, normally you wouldn't want to have output in a constructor or a destructor, but in this case, I'm going to leave these in here so that you can see an example of when these get called. So I'm going to declare two variables. I'll call them d1 and d2, and I'll pass one and two as the parameters. And then I'll print a message that I'm done declaring my variables. So let's compile and run. And you can see main starts, the constructors are called, and then main ends. So now let's add a destructor. Now a destructor has the name of the class preceded by a tilde. It doesn't take any parameters. And in normal cases, you would do all your cleanup here. We really don't have to clean up from this class. So I'm going to print a message that the destructor is being called. Again, you almost never want to have actual output in your constructors and destructors. But I'm doing it here so that we can see when the destructor is called. So now let's compile and run again. And you can see that once main exits, the destructors are called. The reason they're called here is because these variables d1 and d2 go out of scope. So what about with a function call? So I'm going to write a, just a simple function that takes a destruct as a parameter, and then it declares another destruct object as a local variable. And then I'll print out that we're in the function, and we'll see what happens with those. So if I compile and run, you can see that we didn't call our function. So that's not very interesting. So let's go ahead and call our function. And we'll put an output statement indicating that we're calling the function. And let me add a, another new line here just to give us some separation. And I'll do the same thing here. So we compile and run. And now you can see that something different happens. We declare some variables. And when the function's called, we only see one constructor being invoked. There's no constructor call that we see here for D3, and that's because that this uses what's called the copy constructor, which we'll see in a later video. However, notice we have destructor for four and destructor for one, and that's because we get a copy of D1 into D3. So D3 and D4 both go out of scope here, and we call their destructor. So this, even though this says destructor one, it's actually calling the destructor for this variable, which just has a copy of everything that was in the actual parameter, which was D1. And if that's confusing, we go into that a lot in a lot more detail in a future video. And let me add a space here so that we sync up with what we have there. For our final example, I'm going to declare a pointer. We'll call this one D5, and we'll make a new destruct object with 5 as the parameter. If I compile and run this, you'll notice we call the constructor for D5, but we never call the destructor because what goes out of scope is not this object, but this pointer. So it frees up the memory that was allocated for the pointer variable itself that holds the address for that object, but it doesn't clean up that object. We actually have to call delete 
on that object so that the destructor explicitly gets called. Anytime you allocate memory with new, you have to free that memory. So now let's run our code. And you can see that when main starts, we have three constructors, D1, D2, and D5. And then when we call the function with D1 as a parameter, we have one constructor that gets called, one copy constructor, which we don't see here, and then two destructors, one for the parameter and one for the local variable. And again, the parameter has a copy of the actual parameter. That's why you see destructor one here. Then when I call delete, that calls the destructor for D5 and then main ends. And so our last two objects, D1 and D2, go out of scope. And so the destructor is called for those. And you can see that they're called in the reverse order that they're declared. So that's a quick introduction to destructors in C++. And again, in our next video, we'll see a more advanced example where we have a class that actually allocates memory. We'll see how to free that memory. And we'll also see an example of a copy constructor, which is what, which is what gets called in cases such as passing a parameter by value like we did here.